With Renaissance, going green saves you money. r-charge.net or .com Alright, today we're going to look at the three-pole monopole again. And this time we have a few modifications or additions. And we're going to look at the mechanical battery swapper. And it will eventually be computer controlled. Still working on that. So, we have this in a case and we're looking to start selling this in this case with a variety of features. So let's begin to look at all the detail. On this side we have um, the charging and the input to drive the actual motor. And these buttons down here represent what the battery swapper will do automatically with the buttons. These two right here um, switch around these two batteries from one being the charging battery to the other one being so these batteries swap around as we push the button. So let's try that first right here to see. So you can look at the voltages and we're going to switch them around so you can see now this one becomes the primary and is discharging and this one is charging up as a secondary battery bank. So that is controlled by a four pole relay switch inside there. And then there's a second one and this is for the other side. These generator coils here are isolated completely there's three sets and I've got some extra ones around the outside and these ones are isolated completely from the monopole system and represented with the voltage here voltmeter and that I believe is the charging voltage so what this does is it goes through a bridge rectifier and our little pulsar system here and it charges up one battery bank while well, the other one provides a load, in this case we have a little bulb and we have the two voltages here and then we can just push the buttons down here and again it will switch that other contactor you can hear a little click so now these ones changed this one begins to charge and this one's discharging so the battery swapper will swap this around automatically whenever it comes to a low voltage point that you choose. Um, either side you can, either battery bank, you can choose a low voltage uh, switch point which would be either 12 volts, 11 and a half, 11 volts, 10 and a half or 10 and then every time the one battery gets to that voltage it will switch over so that the other battery can then become the load and um, and then that one become the charging battery. In the same case with this side, front side, you can switch around the same way and that way it's automatic you don't have to keep switching your batteries around so what do we have here? We have extra coils here. Now this is the six pole monopole, not the three pole, but it started off as a three pole kit and then we added a rotor that has six um, magnets in it and uh, six coils all the way around. This one, this one, and this one. This is the master coil and these two are the slave coils and that's represented with each circuit here, this transistor. So there's really three SSG circuits here. And then that goes to a cap pulsar system like we have in our fan kits. And then um, that goes out to the charging battery. There is some advantages to doing that, and that being that you can rotate the batteries around because um, the capacitor pulsar system transduces the energy to allow for that. The other advantage is it 
is if you disconnect the charging battery for a second, uh, it won't be as likely to blow out the circuit because it will be charging the capacitor. So you have a little bit of time there, not very much at all, depending on the size of your capacitor. So again, we have the same sort of system on the other side. And um, uh, these generator coils are connected in series with each other, and they're putting out about 40 volts. If I disconnect the charging battery, you can see um, on the voltmeter it will go up instantly. And you can see on the battery here just how much is going. So, anyway, I'm going to knock my sign down there. Okay, so you can hear the difference in the RPM when I disconnect the load here. Let's disconnect it again. Now, this is only the charging load. And you can watch the amps change in there. We're looking at in this case, the RPM is speeding up as I am putting a load on it. Um, <laughs> did you notice that? Now it's speeding up when I put the load on it. <laughs> Very interesting. Because this is not your typical load. See now if I connected this bridge rectifier directly to the battery bank, then it would clamp down as it would try and charge the battery. It would it would create a closed loop system like an alternator and it would pull as much as it could off of this rotor, mechanically speaking. And um, that's not what we want. Let's connect up this voltmeter again here. So what we want, again let's disconnect this and see the voltage. So we got 1297 while it's charging. So yeah, it's, it's not charging very fast, but it still is charging. You can see that. Definitely putting something into this battery. But yeah, 1297 we're already pretty fairly charged. There, see it's already 12. And the eight going up, and uh, what we were saying is, if we were trying to clamp down this, uh, if we were going directly without the pulsing system to the battery, then it would clamp it down. This way, it regulates a little bit better, and it creates a better charge. It allows the battery to charge itself more than a constant current system would allow. So again, you can see these batteries over here. I'm going to push the button again. You're going to watch them change in voltage. So now that one becomes a charging battery, and that one is loaded, is loading down, and it sped up a little bit because we have a higher voltage now on the input. This system allows for almost uninterrupted. Um, power to the bulb. The bulb represents an inverter load on a larger system where you're running AC power off it. So I'm going to push the button again on the load side then you'll see the bulb hardly flicker. So it's, it's virtually uninterrupted. So if we put a capacitor across the positive terminals we could and not have any interruption at all and, um, and have the ideal system. Again, the ideal system is to, on a solar system for example, is to not use one battery only, to use two battery systems so that the battery is always charging or discharging and not forced in a situation where there's always a load while it's trying to charge up. That's not the best for the battery. It's not as efficient. Of course, having one battery is less expensive um, 
because it's one battery rather than two. But if you want to keep your batteries and you want to have the most efficient system, that's the way to go. Now, of course, with this system, you can restore batteries 80% of the time and allow you to keep your batteries. So that's the idea of the battery swapping system. We can have two separate banks here swapping around, or we can configure this to swap um, all the batteries around in different configurations where we have a four battery bank swapping system as well. <coughs> and what else? We could create some extra options on here like putting the timing wheel on the back as well. We could take some of the energy, we could maybe separate these coils let me talk about these coils for example for a second there. This inner these inner coils are producing about 10 volts and the other ones are about one and a half volts. So they don't the outside ones don't add as much nearly as the inner ones. So we could probably take these um, or maybe one set of coils and uh, pulse that back into the primary battery if it doesn't quite sustain itself. Um, the output on these systems really depends on the size of the batteries you're using, the voltage you are um, attempting to charge. For example, 12 volts input, you could charge um, well over 100 volts of batteries on the output. So the more battery you put on the output, the, the, the more gain you're going to get in the system, <clears throat> the more efficient your charging will be. And um, so you could attempt to use that um, that little wheel here, the little timing gear system that we have as an add-on that fits on right onto the side of the motor right there. And you could time that to pulse into the primary battery at a given time. And that um, should help keep it charged and with the swapping around it should maintain itself. So we could in this case tune it a little bit better. What we have here is a little resistor, um, it's sort of a startup system where right now I have 100 ohms of resistance right um, at this point. There's another 100 ohm resistor in there is what we call the branch resistor and then there's 47 ohms per uh, uh, transistor on the base resistor. So when I start it up I bypass this particular 100 ohm resistor so it's easier to start up. Um, if I'm going to put a load on it it's kind of a hard to start up load unless I really can spin it to get it started. These systems require, this is the basic system that re, that is using on the master coil an extra an extra wire there as the trigger wire and unless it gets a, a one volt it won't turn the transistors on so you have to have a little bit of RPM on there to do that. Now what I was saying is you could change around the number of motor coils or the number of, of generator coils. You can place them in different spots with this particular setup because there's six magnets on the rotor rather than three. So we could push these rods on these generator coils in a little bit. You can see the gap is um, going from the rotor all the way to the plastic. So you could push it in another eighth of an inch or more. That would load down the rotor more and create more voltage and more charging on the output side. And that would also reduce the amp draw on the front end um, and the charging rate may, uh, may increase as well when you load down the motor. So that all depends again on the trigger resistances that you're using the resistors in series here to get to your ideal sweet spot. Again, the sweet spot will change depending on the voltage you're running 
like if I'm running 12 volts or 24 volts would be quite different than 12 volts or 36 volts even more um, in this case I could change the voltage of of the primary and secondary batteries here and not have to worry about um, the relays. These relays are run off of the output actually um, which is a 12 volt system in that case. So we could get this really cranking up um, you know 24 volts is about as fast as I would want to, about as high voltage on this system I would want to push until we could do a new rotor that allows the magnets to be more safely secured in there. Um, so that is our system. There's a lot of different things that could be done with this and um, different kinds of loads that could be run. Like I said, a little inverter could be run off of this. Um, you know, if we have these batteries basically taking care of themselves, swapping around, then this side is, is really free. Um, and that's great. I mean, in this case, we're only running, um, you know, very little. I could probably put 100 milliamps or maybe a little bit less on this output and keep that going with rotating them around while this continues to, um, you know, swap around. Like I said, depending on how you, the size of your batteries and, um, yeah, the tuning with the trigger resistor and the, the load um, these will basically keep swapping around and uh, if they don't keep themselves up maybe you can add some of the power from the output back into the primary and that's up to you to decide how you want to run it I think that's it uh, we're looking to bring out the battery swapper in its full form with um, larger, optional, larger uh, relay contactors, uh, switches that would be 200 amps to do larger systems. But for now we have a 10 amp limit on this particular, on these particular relays. And so we'll offer that, which you'll be able to upgrade as soon as the relays are ready to order. You could still use the same system to drive larger the relays as big as you want to run or use. And then again, it will be computer controlled so that you won't have to push any buttons or anything. Just you decide what voltages you want to use and then that's it. It's a walkaway operation. It takes care of itself.